Hi, Mary here again from New York, and it's part two of the Healthy Planet Information. The luncheon I went to uh, yesterday, Sunday afternoon, and had a wonderful meal and heard a wonderful lecture by Dr. Allen, the natural nurse. <laughs> and the reason I'm putting on all this information out for you, and I'm breaking it up in two, because there's a lot of websites uh, as you listen, and they go through the information. There are lots of websites that you'll be able to pick up on and, and possibly want to um, hear more about in context, because it would be too big a blog to do a whole thing on that. So just thought, out of interest, you may want to share this information with people that you know are concerned about this. I don't care what people do, but I do want to have choice, and information gives me the choice to choose what is best for me, just like what's best for you. And if you like this blogging platform, uh, join me, and you can get an authority blog blogging platform just like this, and I will show you, uh, point you the way to how to use it, and you can be sharing what's valuable to you because you would be surprised how valuable what you have to share is to someone else. And this is the, this is the whole thing about blogging. There's someone out there looking for your story and for what you have to share and you won't know it until you speak. And blogging, video blogging, is one way to get out there and find out and help more people. So it can help your business or help you personally, or help you connect with people that have um, interests that are similar. So I hope you're enjoying this part two of HealthyPlanet.org, and be aware. Um, just have fun. Have an awesome day. Awesome is always a choice, like everything is always a choice. So choose, and we'll see you at the top. Bye bye. structure of the plant and then they regrow the cell 
the uh, tissue culture, which is called cloning. Okay? Now, all of this contains scientific uncertainties and risk potential. Okay? So, the gene construct and the gene sequence is changed. That's what happens. So, anybody organic organs here that heard of BT toxins? So a BT used to be something that was used in organic agriculture as a rather non-toxic pesticide. But now it's useless because it's being injected into these genetically modified plants. And then they test for markers and they add an antibiotic. See, it's, they add the antibiotic and guess what happens? Everything is killed except the resistant gene cells. Now that's how it works on a bigger issue. Like if you have heard of um, Monsanto's pesticides, right? right? Like Roundup. Yeah. So what does Roundup Ready mean? Isn't that a cute name? Roundup Ready. Yeah, so it's like you're going to go out there on your horse. It's Roundup resistant. It's resistant, just like this. So you can, if you're a farmer, you can take your whole field, plant the whole field with the genetically modified soybeans, and then spray tons and tons of this highly toxic pesticide. Guess what the United States EPA did last week? Come on, you're all up on everything. What did they do? Agent Orange? Not that many. Oh, not the Agent Orange yet. What did they do about the Monsanto um, Roundup? They just raised the allowable limit last week. Why? Because the amount that was supposedly allowed before is no longer working. So now they did two things. They're making rapidly new genetic forms that are resistant to Agent Orange, which they're going to now dump all over our fields and our foods. Isn't that intelligent? But for meanwhile, until that's done, they elevated the allowable amount of Roundup that can be doused all over our world. And when I say world, because it used to be just the United States, but I told you through the global harmonization being promoted by Obama and the trade agreements, they've increased this amount all over the world with devastating consequences. So now they're growing the transferred genetically modified gene through cloning. And it would be serious health hazard to introduce a gene that codes for antibiotic resistance into the normal flora of the general population. Who said that? Directed division of anti-infective drug products. Has anybody heard that the uh, resistant strains of bacteria are increasing tremendously in hospitals? It's linked to this. Absolutely. Well, it's okay. also in uh, farm animals, right? Huh? Farm animals yes. get, some farm animals get fed uh, sub-therapeutic doses. University where I am a professor and when you guys leave tonight you can take some flyers about an up and coming stuff I have all my books there some of them for sale go to naturalnurse.com for updates about all this stuff so these are what they got warned about allergens toxins new diseases and nutritional problems all of which have come to fruition they contain unexpected high concentrations of plant <laughs> chemicals Okay, accidental changes. What about accidental changes? Have you guys heard of mutations? So besides the ones that they're purposely doing, like with these mosquitoes, they have no idea what would happen by doing this. All right? Increased levels of known naturally occurring toxins, appearance of new, not previously identified toxins. Has anyone heard of a very strange disease, Dr. Gale? Do you know the name of the disease? It's like Morgellons? Oh, yes. Morgellons. Yes, disease. they're associated often with Lyme disease. So they don't know what causes that. But when they look at the pieces of thread that grows out of human skin, and you know, I had a lot of patients who gave me that list of symptoms. I'm talking a few years ago, and I didn't know about Morgellons. So unfortunately, I kind of said, well, maybe you should go to a psychiatrist. No. You know, because they were talking about stuff crawling under their skin and growing out through their skin. Parasites connected to Lyme disease. Yeah. So those those pieces of threads that grow out, they are, when they investigate them, they're finding that they're part plant and they're part animal. So are they related to genetic modification? I don't know. I'm just saying all these strange things are happening. We don't know. We don't know enough about it. The residues of plant constituents or toxicants in meat and dairy pose 
human health concerns. And whoops, come back there. The, this is what they say, Bob, this is what you were talking about, okay? This is their big thing. This is how they push it down your throat and everybody else's. They say, the agency is not aware of any information showing that foods derived by these new methods differ from other foods in any meaningful or uniform way. Statement of policy. Notice when this was, guys. 1992, as I told you, the research began when I was there in 69, and by the 80s it was already in the food supply, and by 92, that's when they got ready to really massively release it. So they came out with this policy statement. Okay, a lot of secret documents confirmed that the facts contradicted that statement, which is used to proliferate the sale. What was said within the FDA, the processes of genetic engineering and traditional breeding, traditional breeding would be like making hybrids, okay, are different. And according to the technical experts, they lead to different risks. Guess what happened to Linda? Guess what happened to any employee in the FDA who came forth with the negative data against GMOs? None of you could really guess? You think they continued to have their job? No, they did not. Okay. So by trying to force an ultimate conclusion, there's no difference between foods with genetically engineering and regular. The agency was trying to fit whatever. Linda again said that. All right? Animal feeds derived from genetically modified plants cause more stuff. This guy, Gerald Guest, director of the FDA, out. Replaced by a Monsanto higher up. Okay? Profound difference between the types of unexpected effects from traditional breeding and genetic breeding. This is FDA microbiologists. This is the industry's pet idea, namely that there are no unintended effects that will raise the FDA's level of concern. But time and time again, there is no data to back up their statements. Okay, what has happened to the scientific elements of this document? On and on. So this is the same story. Okay, I'm going to move ahead because some of us want to go out on that nice walk, right? But we'll, we'll go through this. Now, who overruled the scientists? Michael Taylor! Who appointed Michael Taylor to be the head of the shindig here? Obama administration, guys. Okay? So he's in charge of FDA policy. In charge of FDA. He's the former Monsanto attorney and later Monsanto vice president, and now the U.S. food safety czar. Is there any problem with this? Ah, no. no problem. It's time and time again when they test this stuff. Okay? So many animals avoid GMO feed when they're given a choice. And they've done tons of experiments on that. Here, here's mice just with GMO corn and regular corn. Here's the GMO corn. They wouldn't even touch it. Like, hey, you guys are nuts. I'm not eating that crap. Okay, now when they are force fed genetically modified food and they don't have a choice, 7 of 20 rats developed stomach lesions and another 7 of 40 died within two weeks. Hundreds of laborers in India have reported allergic reactions, these skin reactions, to Bt cotton. But it gets worse. Okay, so this was in 2008. Hospital records show that victims of itching have increased massively. This year, that was the first year that they produced the BT cotton crops. Also, almost every cotton worker from this village suffers from itching. Not a day passes without a uh, you know, somebody trying to, to treat it. Also, upper respiratory, eye problems, skin problems, and overall problems. And, uh, Okay, and guess what? The sheep and goats also started developing the same skin problems. And